It strikes me actually that we do have some discontinuities in our lives anyway, in the sense that, you know, you go to sleep and then you wake up eight hours later, that's a discontinuity in time. And and in space and time, we often have these things where we notice something we hadn't seen before. Suddenly a scene changes because we realize that our friend is standing over there or there's a danger over here. And so in a sense, the our model of what's happened is suddenly flipped into something else. And so we do have a bit of, of discontinuity in our lives. But, but, but this is a really interesting question about what do films tell us about brains? Because as people figured out how to make movies and, and made discoveries along the way, it gives us some insight into what's happening under the hood. One of the pieces and relates to a topic that you covered multiple times on, on the pod, which is the way that this system for representing internal models can multiplex. So the same machinery that we're using to simulate a model of what's happening right now, we can drive, in that case, the model's being driven mostly by what's in front of our eyeballs, but we can drive that same machinery by retrieving stuff from episodic memory, by thinking about what might happen in the future, by thinking about a story that somebody's telling us. And so if you're wandering through your environment and you see an old friend and that reminds you of the last time you saw them, that's another kind of discontinuity that I think is part of why the ability to cut across time and space works is because your brain is used to shifting these models rapidly and across big shifts in order to think about stuff that is offline and but related to the current situation. 